Hi, my name is Mike Freeman, and I'm a hydrologic technician with the USGS office here in Salt Lake City, Utah. I would like to take a few minutes to talk about using SWAMI to make a weir discharge measurement. From the site information page, select Tasks, Discharge Measurement, and select New Channel to begin your measurement. In the Channel Information page, you will enter the channel name, and for the QM method, select Weir from the drop down menu. As you've noticed, the deployment method was automatically populated with other. After you have populated all the fields, click measure to go to the measurement page. On the measurement page, the measurement is noted as a flume measurement. Disregard the title of this page. The measurement will be documented as a weir measurement in SWAMI and in site visit. After you've taken your head readings at the weir, record the head readings in the head box by entering the reading directly or clicking the calculator and entering the value with the appropriate numbers. Next, assign a measurement time to the head reading by clicking the blue time button. This will assign a time to the head reading to the nearest minute. If you would like to assign a head reading to the nearest second, click the calculator next to the time box. By clicking the now button, you will assign a time value to the nearest second. Click Done to return to the measurement screen. Once time and head readings have been recorded, click Add to populate the reading. You may need to make multiple readings to determine the mean head reading to determine the discharge at the weir. For this example, we will enter four head readings. After the four head readings have been added, SWAMI will determine the mean head for the measurement. To do this, simply click the boxes next to the head measurements you wish to use. For this example, we will use all head readings with a reading of 2.68 feet. After you have checked the boxes, enter the correlated flow from the mean head reading from the assigned weir rating for your station. For this example, the correlated flow for a head reading of 2.68 feet has a discharge of 1.35 feet. After the correlated flow has been entered, click Done to end the weir measurement. A dialog box will appear asking if you want to end the measurement. Click Yes to end the measurement. The next page is a channel summary page, where you can document channel conditions and the measurement location. The drop downs make documenting channel conditions pretty easy. In this example, our section location was at the gauge. You will notice the measurement distance is automatically entered as a zero. Horizontal flow was even. For channel conditions, the material was artificial. Stability was firm. Channel material was even. Velocity description, the velocity was distributed standard and steady. Once you have finished the channel description, click Done, which will return you to the channel summary page. Click Done to return to the discharge measurement page. From the discharge measurement page, you can add another channel to the measurement, or if you are done, you can enter your gauge height information to compare the measured flow to the rated flow. For this example, our stage is 2.68 feet. If the weir is the control of the gauging station, the percent difference will be zero as you entered the corresponding discharge from the rating table as observed in this example. To verify the weir rating, a discharge measurement using an alternative method should be done a couple times each year. When your measurement is complete, click Done. You will be asked if you want to end the discharge measurement. Simply click Yes to end the measurement. Your last task is to fill out the measurement summary page. Typically, I enter the measurement number. If the measurement number is unknown, you can select the auto sequence from the measurement number, which will assign the next measurement number in site visit. Rate your measurement. Determine the base flow conditions. Fill out the gauge height information.
and populate the start and end times. Lastly, include any measurement remarks. If the weir is a control of the gauge, be sure to mention the conditions of the weir, documenting if the weir is level or the upstream velocity conditions approach the weir. Once you have populated all fields in the measurement summary, click Done to end the measurement. Now your measurement is complete. If you have any questions on completing a weir measurement in SWAMI, please contact the SWAMI Help Group at an email address shown or visit the FIS webpage at the address shown.